In this video, we will discuss testing a claim about a standard deviation or variance. Here are the key elements. Notation, we've got N is the sample size, S is the sample standard deviation, sigma is the population standard deviation, S squared is the sample variance, and sigma squared is the population variance. Requirements, the sample is a simple random sample, and the population has a normal distribution. This is a fairly strict requirement. The test statistic is chi square, which is equal to n minus one times s squared over sigma squared, round to, the, round to three decimal places as in table A4. Um, use technology or table A4 with uh, degrees of freedom df equals n minus one for p-values. Use table A4 with degrees of freedom, freedom df equals n minus one for critical values. Uh, caution, the chi-square test of this section is not robust against a departure from normality, meaning that the test does not work well if the population has a distribution that is far from normal. The condition of a normally distributed population is therefore a much stricter requirement when testing claims about sigma or sigma squared than when testing claims about a population mean mu. When testing claims about sigma or sigma squared, the p-value method the critical value method and the confidence interval method are all equivalent in the sense that they will always lead to the same conclusion. Here are some properties of the chi-square distribution. Um, all values of chi-square are non-negative and the distribution is not symmetric. There is a different chi-square distribution for each number of degrees of freedom. The critical values are found, found in table A4 using degrees of freedom equal to n minus one in table A4. Each critical value of chi-square in the body of the table corresponds to an area in the top row of the table, and each area in that top row is a cumulative area to the right of the critical value. Table A4 for the chi-square distribution uses cumulative areas from the right, unlike table A2 for the standard normal distribution which provides cumulative areas from the left. Listed below are the heights in centimeters for the simple random sample of female supermodels. Lists of names in the book, if you're curious. Um, I know Giselle Bunchen was one of them. Uh, I'm pretty sure Heidi Klum was another. Use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that supermodels have heights with a standard deviation that is less than sigma equals 7.5 centimeters for the population of women. Does it appear that heights of supermodels vary less than the heights of women from the general population? And here are the numbers involved. The sample is a simple random sample. In checking for normality, we see that the sample has no outliers and a normal quantile plot, which is on page 401 in the book, shows points that are reasonably close to a straight line pattern, and there is no other pattern that is not a straight line. Both requirements are satisfied. Technology capable of conducting this test will typically display the p-value. Stat crunch can be used to, as described at the end of this section, and the result will be shown in the display on page 401. Instead of using the assumed value of sigma for H0 and H1, stat crunch uses sigma squared. For the null hypothesis, sigma equals 7.5 is equivalent to sigma squared equals 7.5 squared, which is 56.25. The display shows that the test statistic is chi squared equals 0 0.907, rounded, and the p-value is less than 0 0.001. So here are steps one through five. The claim that the standard deviation is less than 7.5 centimeters is expressed in symbolic form as sigma is less than 7.5 centimeters. If the original claim is false, then sigma is greater than or equal to 7.5 centimeters. The expression sigma is less than 7.5 centimeters does not contain equality, so it becomes the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the statement that sigma equals 7.5 centimeters. So H naught is sigma equals 7.5 centimeters, and H1 is sigma is less than 7.5 centimeters, which is the original claim. The significance level is alpha equals 0 0.01. Because the claim is made about sigma, we use the chi-square distribution. Stat crunch display below shows the test statistic of chi-square equals 0 0.907, rounded, and it shows that the p-value is less than 0 0.0001. 
because the p-value is less than the significance level of alpha equals 0.01, we reject H0. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that female supermodels have heights with a standard deviation that is less than 7.5 centimeters for the population of women. It appears that the heights of supermodels do vary less than the heights of women in the general population. And I'm just going to point out one thing here, which is that if we go back to the list of values here, the minimum is 175 and the maximum is 180 centimeters, which means that there is no possible way that this uh, set has a standard deviation um, of anything greater than five, which is the range. Because if you remember, if you remember back when we were first discussing the sample deviation, uh, the standard deviation, we said that the approximation of the standard deviation is going to be the um, range divided by four, which is 1.25. And we found it, the range of this set, or the, the uh, our approximate, um, yeah, the, I don't remember what we said S was for this set, um, but it doesn't really matter right now. We'll see that in a minute. The important thing here is that the approximation says that this is, that this claim is absolutely true. We can't go by the claim. We have to do this, the testing, but that's how we do it. So um, if we use the critical value method, then in step six, the test statistic is calculated by using sigma equals 7.5 centimeters as assumed in the null hypothesis, n equals 16, and that should be s, not one, s equals 1.843909 centimeters. That is the standard deviation of this sample. So the standard deviation of the sample is 1.843909. That is not too far off from the approximate standard deviation we get by dividing the range by the uh, by four. We get this test statistic chi-squared equals 0 0.907. The critical value of chi-squared equals 5.229 is found from table A4 and it corresponds to 15 degrees of freedom and an area to the right of 0 0.99 based on the significance level of 0 0.01 for a left-tailed test. In step seven, we reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic of 0.907 falls in the critical region. We conclude that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that supermodels have heights with a standard deviation that is less than 7.5 centimeters for, uh, for the general population of women. For the confidence interval method, first, we should be careful to select the correct confidence level. Because the hypothesis test is left-tailed and the significance level is 0.01, we should use a confidence level of 98% or 0.98. Using the methods described in section 7.3, we can use the sample data listed in example one to construct a 98% confidence interval estimate of sigma. We use n equals 16, s equals 1.9, I think that was 1.843909 centimeters. Um, Chi square sub L is 5.229 and chi square sub R is 30.578. And then we do all of these calculations to find the, the limits for our confidence interval. Um, and those limits are going to be 1.3 centimeters is less than sigma is less than 3.1 centimeters. And with this confidence interval, we can support the claim that sigma is less than 7.5 centimeters because all values of the confidence level are less than 7.5 centimeters. We reach the same conclusion found with the p-value and critical value methods. And these are much less than 7.5 centimeters. So it really stand, it, it's very clear that 7.5 is way outside the range for sigma. Right. So the methods of this section include two requirements. The sample is a random sample, and the population is normally distributed. If the sample data are not collected in a random matter, the methods of this section do not apply. If the sample appears to be a pop from a population not having a normal distribution, we could use the confidence interval method of testing hypotheses, but obtain the confidence interval using bootstrap resampling. 
Be careful to use the appropriate confidence level. Reject the null hypothesis if the confidence interval limits do not contain the value of the mean claimed in the null hypothesis.